All good. All right. Uh, we can start. Um, there's not that many news I have to share because I've been busy. I don't know if you're aware, but in this area, we had um, PS Configure Minicon, which is in September. We'll probably do again uh, next September. And in this map, we had uh, the user groups tonight. So we had uh, one, two, three, four sessions, uh, three user groups, the Swiss, the London, and the French partial user groups. Uh, so we had a session in German, one in French, and one in uh, English. <coughs> and we had a Jim Pruer from the partial team uh, coming and doing a presentation, a deep dive in crescendo. Hopefully, the recording worked. So I will share them um, soon, probably next week. So today, we have a session from Yurik, who's there. And uh, hopefully, it will be recorded as well. So Yurik, uh, there's also Jody and Julia who wanted to talk, but I can't see them. Let me see if they're around. Otherwise, we'll have to stop them. Let's give maybe let's give a couple of minutes, and then uh, Johan, if you have some updates on on uh, the releases, you can give the quick update on the releases, and then I'll just move away. Uh, we have uh, not uh, so many updates. Uh, Certified DSE, the uh, one notable that has a breaking change. Uh, for SETREC and the uh, computer management DSC that we uh, merged the first uh, class-based resource. So there's a breaking change that it requires uh, uh, VMF 5.0 from now on. Uh, I, I should also, uh, what I saw here just an hour ago, that the latest sampler uh, that, that we released uh, did have a bug with the uh, composite resources. So if a resource using a composite resource and build on uh, Ubuntu in Azure Pipelines, it will fail. So you have to switch over to a, a Windows build worker, then it works again. So good thing to know about. That's it, Gail, I think. Okay, this bit. So Yorick, you can uh, take the stage. If I'm not mistaken, uh, you should be able to see my screen. Uh, yeah, perfect. Well, uh, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Jorik Kuis. I'm a, a cloud solution architect working uh, for Microsoft in, uh, in the Netherlands. And some of you already know me. Uh, I'm, uh, I have been working with the DSC community for, for several years already. Uh, I'm the uh, the owner of the SharePoint DSC module. Uh, back in 2015, I started working uh, on that uh, together with uh, with Brian Farnell. He uh, started the module, and I started contributing. Uh, and in 2017, I I took over the ownership and uh, have been doing SharePoint DSC uh, since then. Uh, and about four years ago, in 2018, uh, I also started working on Microsoft 365 DSC. Uh, uh, Nick Charlebois, uh, one of the other founders of this uh, of this module, uh, came with the idea: uh, uh, Can we use the DSC concept to manage Microsoft 365? Uh, can we somehow uh, use that that DSC uh, uh, the te DSC technology to manage uh, cloud technologies? And we started working on that. Uh, and uh, well, Microsoft 365 DSC is the uh, uh, the result where we uh, we are at an, at the moment. So as mentioned, um, we started back in 2018 as Office 365 DSC. With the change in, in vision of Microsoft from Office 3, 365 to Microsoft 365, we also renamed to Microsoft 365 DSC to align with that uh, with that vision. And where Office 365 supported uh, Skype. Exchange and SharePoint uh, with Microsoft 365, the, uh, the, the, a lot of more workloads uh, have been introduced. Uh, uh, Teams, Intune, security compliance, the whole shebang. And in 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 principle, it's uh, it's just like any other module. Uh, 
like SharePoint DSC or Computer Management DSC or SQL Server DSC, it really doesn't matter. It's a DSC module. However, the odd thing with Microsoft 365 DSC, and it is rarely used in conjunction with other DSC modules. And wh why that is, I'll get back to uh, in, a, in a moment. And just like all other modules, unit tests are required to uh, uh, for, for, for new resources. Uh, but we are not yet. It's on my to-do list, but I haven't uh, managed to uh, to implement it yet. Uh, we don't use the community, the DSC community framework at this time. So we are uh, requiring unit tests and, and the unit test of each resource, and it should not fail, and it should uh, have code coverage of a certain percentage just like you're used to in uh, uh, in other DSC modules, but not to the same level uh, as the DSC community framework. Then where does Microsoft 365 DSC differ from other models? And that's basically where uh, DSC is targeting. If you look at the, the, the classic DSC modules, uh, they run on the local machine. They target the local machine. So when the, the LCM retrieve, uh, receives a configuration, it configures the local machine. So it configures the registry, it configures computer settings, etc. cetera. Microsoft 365 is a software as a service platform. And the uh, software as a service platform does not have an LCM by itself. There's no LCM in the cloud. And it's also, there's no virtual machine so somewhere within Microsoft 365 where you can say, okay, please go ahead and manage uh, Microsoft 365 for me. So that's something we, we have to approach a little bit different. And that is also why we, you barely see uh, other DSC modules being used in conjunction. And they all target local settings, registry, et cetera. And Microsoft 365 were using an LCM of, uh, of uh, somewhere, a, a custom uh, LCM somewhere, and then target the, 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 the Microsoft 365 tenant. What, what, possibles, what possibilities do, do we have? Uh, first of all, we can use a virtual machine. Just create a virtual machine. It can be a virtual machine on-prem. It can be a virtual machine on your own laptop with, uh, with a Hyper-V. It can be a virtual machine in Azure. It can be a virtual machine in any other cloud. It really doesn't matter. It just needs to be a Windows virtual machine that has a local co uh, configuration manager. And we, you can use that local configuration manager to target uh, a Microsoft 365 tenant. But uh, there's also a downside there. Usually, if you want to use the, uh, uh, the, the, the apply and monitor functionality, you send a tenant or you send the configuration to the LCM, and that starts checking uh, the compliance if it's still in the desired state. But usually, a configuration is a configuration of a single tenant. You don't want a single MOF file containing settings of multiple tenants. So each tenant has its own uh, MOF file, which also means you need a virtual machine per tenant. And that's where yeah, it, it becomes a little bit different. If you have a small environment with, with maybe a test environment and a production environment, that's no problem. Right? You need two virtual machines. But I've, I've spoken with an ISV who said, yeah, this is nice, but I'm managing 150 customers, each having a test and a production tenant. So basically, you're telling me I need 300 VMs just to manage the, the, uh, the, the, each, each tenant, each one of those tenants. So there is a challenge there. Then we can have a, an, an Azure function or container. And this is something we're working on, uh, on, on how you can best use this. Uh, so the containers inside of Azure don't have an LCM yet. Uh, I, I he heard that, that that they are working on it, but right now it's not it's not in there. An Azure function basic, basically means you need to create your own logic and use PowerShell to check, uh, basically create your own uh, own LCM inside of Azure functions. 
that's also possible to create your own LCM, uh, create your own local configuration manager that, that does the, the testing for you using the invoke DSC resource. Uh, you can create something, but it, it, it requires you to build something yourself. But what I've lately uh, built for, for a customer is use Azure DevOps pipelines, where you use the, the LCM on a machine to apply only, and then use a scheduled pipeline to basic, basically mimic the, the monitoring functionality. And this is a solution that I currently uh, uh, like the most. And I recently wrote a, uh, a, a, a white paper, a Microsoft 365 DSC white paper, in which I describe step by step how to implement this solution. If you're interested, I'll share a link, uh, a link later. Besides the, the LCM issue, the LCM uh, challenge we have, Microsoft 365 also offers uh, some unique features. As you can see here, uh, the, the automate and the monitor part, uh, applying the configuration and monitoring if you're still in the desired state, that's native uh, DSC functionality. But we've built additional functionalities on top of that. First of all, uh, you might have heard of reverse DSC that is built by Nick Charlebois. I see that he he's also uh, in the room. And that basically allows you to export the current state into a desired state. So you can export the current situation into a PowerShell desired state configuration file. And if you have an export, you can also apply that to a different tenant. And that way, sync settings between two settings. For example, you have a, something on, on a production environment, and you want to sync those settings to a test tenant to test something. Export your production settings and import to your test environment. And then you can do a test with this exact same settings as you have on your production environment. But this requires an orchestration script. Uh, each technology is a little bit different. So in order to export your current situation, it needs an orchestration script. And there are a couple of orchestration scripts available for reverse DSC. Uh, there used to be an, uh, a SharePoint DSC one, but that's I'll come back to that later, uh, integrated into, uh, into the module itself. I think it's uh, uh, X Web Administration, and there's another module where, uh, uh, where, you have, uh, where you have an orchestration script. But for Microsoft 365 DSC, this orchestration script is natively built into Microsoft 365 DSC. So you don't need any other, uh, other, other scripts or other uh, uh, things. You can just install Microsoft 365 DSC and the reverse DSC support is natively built in. So you can immediately export your current configuration. This is also the case with SharePoint DSC, but all other uh, modules don't have this, uh, this functionality. And we can even, we even provide an export command generator on export.microsoft365dsc.com. Let me quickly show you that. Here it is. Where you can simply select, uh, let's first say none. And then we can simply select the resources you want to have exported. Here in the top, you can specify what kind of authentication mechanism do you want to use. Uh, let's say credentials for the, in this case. Click generate. And here you have the, the export commandlet you have to use to export these specific resources to a DSC file. So it's a very simple process. Just click, click generate, or select and click generate. And then you can simply generate the export command. Can you, can you increase the font a little bit? The font size is too oh, small. Oh, sorry. And then uh, while, yeah. while I'm here, I just wanted to say hi. And then Judy uh, is there, and Julia is somewhere around. I can't see her right now. But uh, Judy just wanted to say hi before she's got to leave. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, nice to nice to see everybody. Um, also, just wanted to introduce my colleague, uh, Julia Wong, who's on the call, who's going to be working on machine config as well. Um, only update today is that we're just going to post a survey in the chat that uh, if you just want to fill it out at your leisure, that would be amazing. Uh, main goal of the survey is to uh, to get a better understanding of 
some of the much loved features on AADSC as we work to hopefully try to incorporate some of those into future plans for machine config. Sorry to interrupt and thanks so much for the chat, uh, Yorick, and thanks, Gail. I'm out. All right. Um, <laughs> thanks, Yorick. This is perfect. Okay, excellent. So it's just a matter of selecting the resources you want to export, click generate, copy this uh, this command to your clipboard, and then paste on your local machine, enter your credentials, and then those resources are exported. Another uh, thing, if you have exported the configuration, you can do much more with that. Microsoft 365 DSC also allows you to generate documentation of a created export. As IT persons, the average IT person loves to have a good documentation, especially good and up-to-date documentation. However, they also usually hate creating documentation. It looks like it's an, some kind of mandatory skill of every IT, uh, IT person. Uh, but creating doc documentation is not one of our best features. What if we just can generate the documentation of, a, uh, of an, uh, an, an, an existing tenant? Uh, with Microsoft 365 DSC, you can. First, create an export, and then generate documentation from that export. We can generate documentation in Excel format, in HTML format, uh, or JSON format, and then you can use that JSON format to import it into any other process you have uh, within your organization. Another possibility you have is comparing two generated exports. Now, if you have a test and a production environment, generate both exports, uh, exports from both environments, and then compare where they are different. Or an export over time, uh, export this month, export next month, and see what has changed over time. This feature is using the DSC parser uh, module to convert a, a, a DSC uh, configuration, a text configuration into an object. Um, and one thing to note here, it requires a static configuration. So it does not support, it currently does not support uh, regular PowerShell keywords like if, for each, et cetera. So it's not a parser of the actual DSC configuration. Uh, it's a static uh, uh, compare tool between two exported. Uh, the export generates a static configuration. Uh, so uh, it compares those two. We also implemented improved logging. Uh, what I noticed with other DSC modules is that uh, we have verbose logging. But if the if it's running on the in the background, uh, most users are, have difficulties grabbing those, uh, finding those those uh, uh, those log files uh, in the C Windows System 32 configuration configuration status uh, folder. There is always the, the verbose logging available, but some modules also do not provide uh, enough uh, information about what exactly is uh, is differencing. Why is a resource not in the desired state? They, they, they just output true or false and not why it is true or false. Or if you run into a, an, an error, the, the verbose output does not show the exact error message. That's why we improved additional, uh, we, improved, uh, uh, we improved the logging functionalities. We added lots of progress logging, so you can simply say, okay, step one, step two, and it's he, he align that on, in the code, line uh, X, line Y. And each test method always outputs the current and the target values, the, the desired state values. So if you do a test DSC configuration, you can see this is the current, these are the current values, these are the target values, and you can compare them easily why, it, why they are different. But not just that. Microsoft 365 DSC also has its own event log to which we log errors and where drifts are logged. So if we Take a look at an example there. As you can see here, uh, I'll increase the font. There's a warning. And in that event, it says there's a configuration drift 
in this case, in the Intune device configuration policy, Windows 10, that's the resource. The parameters that are not in the desired state is this parameter. The current value is this. The target value, the desired value is that. And the, 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 the entire list of, desired, list of desired values is mentioned underneath here. So you can simply monitor your event log. Hey, there is a drift, and this exact value is where it is differencing. If an error occurs, we have an error in the event log, and you can uh, you can see where that exact value has been generated uh, on which line in which uh, uh, module. So there's a lot of information when something goes wrong and why a specific resource is not in the desired state. And this makes uh, let me move that. It makes troubleshooting a lot easier. Another thing that we have built in is telemetry. Microsoft 365 shares telemetry data, and it allows us to see what features are used most, what versions are used, uh, et cetera. So all kinds of information. But of course, we are not sharing any cis sensitive or personal inf identifi identifiable information, no, no settings, no uh, uh no urls uh, 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 uh internal urls etc so everything inside of the resource is not shared it's just uh, if a resource is not in the desired state or if a resource uh, uh, uh if it's monitoring if it's exporting so the, the features we are sharing that no sensitive information and if you really don't want to share telemetry it's also always a possibility to disable uh, the telemetry by using the set M365 DSC telemetry option commandlet. Uh, you can enable it, or you can even configure your own telemetry uh, log analytics workspace where your telem the telemetry is uploaded can you so you can do your own telemetry. And one big functionality we're currently also working on is a dynamic resource generator. Microsoft 365 constantly evolves. Uh, and it's, it's a real challenge to keep up. Uh, we have many product groups working on new functionality of Microsoft 365. And the Microsoft 365 DSC team is pretty small. So we, we wanted a way to quickly generate, if new functionality is, is created, to create, quickly generate a resource for that functionality. And that's where, uh, where we came up with the dynamic resource generator. Right now, Microsoft 365 DSC is using many dedicated PowerShell modules, like the Teams module or the Exchange module or PMP PowerShell. But the end goal is to move everything to the Microsoft Graph. So we have a single authentication module. And currently, some workloads are already using the graph, like Azure AD and Intune. If everything is moved to the graph, within the graph, there's a lot of information, what permissions are needed for a specific commandlet, or what, what kind of information is returned from a commandlet, et cetera. That is all retrievable from the, from the graph. So if we have that information, we can use that to dynamically generate resources. So where we currently have red and a little bit bigger, have, uh, have, have modules for the different workloads. The end goal is to have everything on graph modules. We're not there yet. We're relying on the various product groups to make graph modules available. But once we're there, it's, it makes uh, uh, life so much easier. But right now, the Dynamic Resource Generator is able to generate resources that are based on the Graph API. And as mentioned, currently we're generating a lot of Intune resources that are already using the Graph, uh, a, a lot of uh, Azure AD resources that are using the Graph. So it's, it enables us to quickly generate uh, resources and unit tests. And the only thing you need to do is to validate the generated code to test the resource if it works properly. And if it does, you have a new resource. Instead of building everything from scratch, 
we generate everything. And if we're going to take a look at the, the, the vision and the roadmap, what are we planning for Microsoft 365 DSC? Our, our bold vision, you have to be bold, is that we want to become for Microsoft 365, what ARM templates are to Azure. So ARM templates is the, the, the one of the de facto standards. And now with BICEP, it's a little bit different story, but uh, we want to be the, the standard to implement configuration as code within Microsoft 365. And the roadmap we have planned is basically first to support all workloads and all features. Uh, but as mentioned before, we're a relatively small team. And right now we're working uh, based on demand. Uh, if we get a request of certain functionality, we start working on that. Uh, so where the most uh, demand comes in, that's where we focus our attention. But we're also relying on available PowerShell commandlets and APIs. Uh, for example, a lot of features in the classic admin portal for SharePoint there are no PowerShell commandlets or APIs available for those settings. So we are relying on the SharePoint product group to make PowerShell commandlets or APIs available for them before we can implement uh, those settings. And we want to migrate as much as possible to the graph. As soon as a graph module comes available for a certain workload, will immediately start working on switching those resources to the graph uh, just to make it easier to generate new uh, new resources with the, the uh, dynamic resource generator. If you're interested in more information, I have a whole list of, of resources. Uh, the, uh, we have a, a Microsoft 365 DSC website. You can contribute uh, and, and, and ask questions, submit issues on our, our GitHub project page, uh, just like uh, the, the, the other DSC uh, uh, modules. Uh, in, in our case, it's under the Microsoft organization and not under the DSC community organization. Uh, you can download Microsoft 365 DSC from the, uh, Microsoft, the, uh, the PowerShell gallery. And if you're interested in using Microsoft 365 with Azure DevOps in a true DevOps style, uh, implement uh, deployment with uh, with Azure DevOps and pipelines. I've created this white paper you can find on aka.ms slash m365 DSC white paper. If you're interested in using DevOps with other modules, of course, you can use uh, uh, the, the, the guide there as well. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how to, uh, to create your own uh, 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 pipeline infrastructure in Azure DevOps. So uh, if you uh, all, all notifications, everything we, we communicate, we do it via Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Microsoft 365 DSC. Uh, and we have a YouTube channel with some training videos, et cetera. So uh, if you want to know more, there's uh, available uh, information available there. And then I'm all through what I wanted to share with you. Are there any questions? You're on mute, uh, Johan, or you're not talking to me. <laughs> if you have any question, go on the Q and A area where I am, so then everyone can hear it, and it will also be included in the recording. Thank you. And remove your mute as well. Hey everyone, how you going? Hey. Uh, I, I threw a couple of questions. I threw a, que a question in the um, in in the chat, and I was just quite in kind of interested in um, the reverse DSC. Like I've I've used the module um, before, so I kind of have a bit of a like. Well, it was a couple of years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. So I had a really good under I would say a really good understanding, but I had an understanding of exactly what you guys were trying to achieve. Um, and one of the questions I wanted to ask, with regards to the reverse DSC thing uh, side of things, if um, this is probably also more pointed at Gail as well, is that with if you are essentially if you're trying to manage multiple three six five environments, and obviously you're trying to standardize um, uh, standardize across those environments, would it 
also be beneficial to have reverse DSC then essentially um, be then translated into datum um, YAML configuration that basically then be, you know, essentially um, based on a, uh, a hierarchical um, configuration model? Uh, good question. Uh, we we haven't looked at the the the, the datum implementation uh, at at this time. Okay. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah. That's right. Um. The other the other thing which I was going to ask. I'm really really interested in seeing um the this dynamic resource generator. Do, is there like is that on your GitHub that code? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's okay, uh, cool. it's in, yep. inside yep. of our uh, repository. Uh, yep. So you you can have a look there. Yeah. So, out, out of curiosity, it, what, like, how does it function? Because ultimately, if you're, you're, you're trying to pull, obviously, you're trying to generate a, a DSC resource um, based off an API request. Is that what, what, what's the, the end state? Yeah, we, we are using, uh, uh, Nick just shared a link to, uh, to the documentation in our, uh, on our yep. Microsoft 365.dsc.com website. Uh, but, yep. but if you want to generate uh, a, a new resource with the a dynamic resource generator, uh, you specify which commandlet you want to uh, which commandlet you want to use, and it's pulling information from the graph and gen generating. We've got a template, and it's populating that template, uh, retrieving what what parameters are used, and then populating that into the resource. It's generating the schema. It's generating the the uh, uh, the PS uh, PSM file. Uh, and then generating the unit tests as well, based on the information it is retrieving from the, ga uh, the, the graph. And the graph okay, yeah, so, uh, okay, so you're looking at, um, so, is, is, so by the graph commandlet, you mean the MG graph commandlet, or you mean the actual, like, API endpoint? No, we're, we're, use, we're using the, the graph commandlets. Uh, Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So yeah, you just basically the, the, go through there, grabbing the parameters. Um, then you're yeah. looking for the URL within that to be able to then figure out. Um, I should know. You should just be looking at the parameter sets. So that's really yeah, the parameter exactly. set information, and that's what yeah. you're using to, um, yeah. to pass. And okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And yep, the, cool. the, the, right. the the graph commandlets are uh, are also uh, the the internal graph team. Uh, is uh, has it has a team that is generating PowerShell commandlets based on the graph API. So yeah, those those graph commandlets are also generated. So if a new version of the graph API is released, they just mm. generate a new set of commandlets based on the the, the underlying API. So uh, the commandlets are also generated, and and there's a find mg graph command where you can retrieve all kinds of information about a specific. Uh, commandlet. Uh, what what kind of permissions does it need? What kind of uh, parameters does it have, etc. The the whole all the yeah. information we need is pulled from there. Would it um, with within that kind of um, dynamic resource generator? Um, is there any sort of like versioning capability? So essentially, you're going okay. There's a new version out. Obviously, the existing version is known working. Um, you know, obviously, you don't particularly really want to go and say, oh, "Okay, we're going to, you know, generate a new resource and then push that immediately into um, um, into a uh, into production." Is there like how do, how would it handle versioning in that kind of instance? I'm not sure on uh, on that. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm yep. not the one that is that's uh, working a lot with the dynamic resource generator. So I I yep. not not one hundred percent sure percent sure on that uh, area. If you uh, uh, if you uh, contact me a little later, then I can find it out and and share the information with you uh, uh, with you later. No worries. I think what I'm on my phone at the moment. I'm literally um, okay. <laughs> kind of, I've literally just was sit the whole uh, on the train and just gone to the office. So what I'll do is yeah, I'll reach out later. Um, yeah, sure. But yeah, a really, really awesome talk. Thank you. That was really great. Yeah, yeah no worries. Um, can you hear me this time? Yeah, right? yeah, I can. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to also comment on the reverse DSE stuff. I think con converting the data that we are exporting into the data YAML stuff is not really helpful because we are speaking of hierarchical data. So what we retrieve from the Azure Tenant is flat data. So yeah, there is no idea how we can 
convert it into hierarchical data. But if we export the data, is it possible to export the data in a convertible format? Um, so what I've realized is, or maybe I've done something wrong, if I export the data, I get one big script that contains yep. data and the configuration. So config data and the configuration merge into one file. Yep. Um, do you have a feature to just export the configuration data and not the configuration itself? Currently, we don't. Um, uh, it's it's a, a good idea, uh, and it's something we can we can start uh, thinking about and implement. But currently, we don't. It's uh, the the export generates the the information, the PS one file, and information that is tenant specific, uh, like uh, URLs, for example, are exported in a in a configuration data file. So we do have a configuration data file. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's just for tenant specific information. So if you have uh, a specific value, uh, a specific parameter has value five, that is hard coded in the PS1 file. But if you have, uh, I've, I've, I'm creating a site collection with tenant name dot sharepoint dot com slash sites slash hr, that uh, that is made dynamic based on the tenant name, and the, the tenant name is stored inside of the uh, the configuration data file that is also created. Okay, good. So um, that, that that way you can can you 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 can very easily export from production and import into uh, into a test tenant where you just have to change the name of the uh, uh, of of, of the, uh, the change the information in the data file uh, the, the the other URLs etc. And then you can simply target it to your test tenant and it will also apply successfully. Okay. Second question. I, I know that you are familiar with the DSC workshop template, mm -hmm. and um, a number of customers are now trying to implement M365 DSC, but are struggling with the data handling. So we're trying to merge both concepts, the DSC workshop and M365 DSC. Do you have specifically any experience in kind of putting these two concepts together, or are we touching new ground here? Uh, like I mentioned, I, uh, I, I've looked at Datum and the DSC workshop in, in combination with uh, SharePoint DSC. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm working on Microsoft 365 DSC. And, and personally, I have not uh, combined those two, uh, 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 those two together. It's something we can, uh, we can work on, uh, 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 which is a, a good idea to, to create the composite resources for Microsoft 365 uh, DSC as well. Yeah, and if, if, if I hear how you are generating the resources, I think we should also think about the generator who is creating the composite resources, because yeah, otherwise yeah, it will be exactly. also a mismatch and a total struggle. Yeah, yeah exactly. Makes total okay. sense. Yeah. OK. Thank you, Eric. Let's connect uh, afterwards. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Hi, it's Alan here. Just a quick question. <clears throat> Something I saw earlier today, last night. I can't remember exactly when. Is it possible now, from what I saw, that you can use service principles in certificate-based auth with three six five? Okay, yeah. we Brilliant. we just got a nice uh, nice present from the from the product group where I think uh, uh, planner and uh, security and compliance still required credentials. Uh, there was no service principle uh, authentication uh, supported, and uh, in the last couple of days they uh, they released a New Year's present. Where the, their modules are updated and now support uh, the uh, service principles for those workloads as well. Uh, and I think uh, Nick shared the link to the authentication, the current authentication uh, matrix. Uh, let me share that with you. Uh, as you can see, uh, all workloads currently support credentials, but also a certificate thumbprint. Not all certificate path and application secret and managed identity, but Certificate, certificate thumbprint is now supported by all workloads that we support uh, within Microsoft 365 DSC as well. Okay, many thanks. Brilliant. It's good news. Yeah, exactly. It was something that we uh, were very happy about as well uh, and have been pushing with the various product groups, uh, especially uh, the credentials. Uh, one of the best practices is if you have a credential, use MFA, uh, especially when it has high privileges. Uh, and with if you want to configure stuff, you need global admin privileges. And global admins, you need MFA. Uh, the best practice is configure MFA. But as you can imagine, uh, the LCM is running in the background. It's an unattended process. And MFA and unattended processes, that's not a good match. Uh, so th that's why uh, yeah, 
the support of service principles is a is a welcome addition uh, where we can now uh, use everything using service principles, not relying on any accounts without MFA. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? If there are, please come to the Q&A uh, area in the front. And when you finish, please move off the Q&A area. Thank you, Raymond. <laughs> in other words, get lost. <laughs> now, the reason is otherwise it streams the video as a spotlight to everyone, and that, that may affect oh, the performances. Okay. Yeah. If there's no more question, yeah. you can probably catch your Yorick around for a few like a few minutes after this call. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Julia is still around. I think she was at the back of the room. Julia, no. She's hiding somewhere. Let me just go check if I can grab her. So Julia is Jody's colleague, so colleague, so she's new to the team, and let me just go Graham. I'm checking out terms if she's there. And um, yeah, so she had. A survey which I don't have the link anymore. Oh, I've got this link here on AADSC, so AG Automation DSC feedback. Here it is. All right, so I've put that in the chat. So basically, the, the um, machine config team is asking the questions you know, what are you missing out? Okay, oh, she's, she's in another call, so I'll do it. So, um, so basically, the team wants to know, okay, what are you missing from machine config that you had in Azure Automation DSC? And uh, that's a good, like, feel free to tell them as much as you want, uh, because this is, you know, they, I think they're starting planning um, uh, what is the next feature that we'll have to work on. And I have some ideas, but I don't want to, I don't want to push my agenda, so I'll let you uh, fill, in, fill this form, and then they will find out. And if you have questions, always try to uh, catch Jody or Julia. Jody is on Twitter, so she's easy to reach out to. And otherwise, feel free to let me know, and then I can also forward to Jody. But you probably have her email address and everything. If there's no more questions, I think we don't have anything else planned. Anything else worth the attention? If anyone wants to say anything, feel free to come in the Q&A area or to the stage. I'll feel free to say it. I just wanted to say, hi, Josh. Hi, Mikey. Hi, Nick. Good to see you there as well. And um, I, I just a very quick comment on reverse DSC, uh, two minutes. Uh, basically, I think what would be interesting to do is at the moment, the export is generating the config. If we add an object model in between that we can change the output, that would be the best approach. So then we can have either just the data or just you know the script output. Um, that would be great. That's what I'm going to say today. I'm off. Thank you. Uh, you're on mute if you went for the Q &A, uh, on the Q&A right to speak. You're on mute, uh, Dimitris. Is that better? Yep. Fantastic. So I'm the PM for Winget at Microsoft. And I was just going to share, um, we've started working on DSC resources for installing, repairing, and getting Winget installed, um, as well as um, some other work that we're looking at kind of related to DSC. So I just wanted to kind of share that. I'm going to paste the issue link in the chat. Um, you know, we're more than happy to have feedback. It's all open source. You can kind of go dig in. Um, we've got some PRs that are in progress, and I think this is going to be Part of our pathway of getting onto Windows Server, um, and we've also been discussing some other DSC-related things as well. So, just kind of introduction, and uh, you know, if anybody's interested, feel free to go take a peek, and you can reach out on GitHub or Twitter, or email me directly, however you want to communicate. That's awesome. Uh, I guess that means next uh, DSC. So, we have the DSC community calls every six weeks. 
so you're saying you're doing a presentation on on the uh, DSC resources for Winget uh, next time? Yeah, if we're, if we're far enough ahead on it, we will. Um, we've got our first um, PowerShell module, um, kind of, I would say, you know, super alpha. Um, we're working with Jeff Hicks and some others from the community on fixing things. You know, our team is primarily sort of embedded C++ type developers. So a lot of the team is really learning about PowerShell and we would love the feedback to make sure that we're building it in a way that makes sense and that the modules and the commandlets work kind of the way you're thinking. We're going to break them down under um, four namespaces. We're going to have one for DSC, one for the client, one for d working with manifests and sources, and then another one um, that we're looking at. Um, we're not sure if we're going to do this one or not, but it's really kind of unifying everything together and making it easier to kind of maintain your own private sources and manifests. Perfect. We'll, we'll have a look at that for sure. And then we'll invite you to the next DSC community call. And then I'll touch base with you probably. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I can see Nick is taking the go kart and then he's leaving. All right. See you, everyone. I will. Uh, you can visit the map if you haven't had time yet. So you can go outside of this room back into the pub, and then you can also go out from the pub into the PS world and you will see the map is quite big. You can, even if it's closed, you can still access the big venue where we had Minicon. We haven't changed it yet. Um, and this is probably where we will have Minicon as well in September. I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, we also organized the PowerShell Conference Europe. So um, if you go to hcpspsconf.eu, you can find the information there. If uh, you're in the London area or not too far, you can look at uh, PS Day UK. Like if you go in the pub, you will have the two logos. And then just by the logos, you press X, and then you will see um, the website showing up. So the one for PS Day UK is on the PS Day UK logo, and the other one is for the PS Config logo. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks very much for coming. And uh, the space is open for another 20 hours or so, so feel free to hang out. Thank you. Bye-bye.